Today's subject is bigger. Growth, the natural maturity cycle of all living things. Starting small, as an infant, you inevitably outgrow everything that once fit you. The cloak of metaphoric knowledge that once swallowed you in size is now bursting at the seams. You, as God, also have a trajectory led climactic zenith to reach in this world. Yes, a lowercase genesis in the beginning to the promised broadened being in capital letter uppercase with an exuberant explanation point concluding every phrase because you are not only big but notoriously bigger than you ever planned. Now, friends, let us listen and apply this message. Lyrical Recital The place where I come from is a small town. They think so small. They use small words. But not me. I'm smarter than that. I've worked it out. I've been stretching my mouth to let those big words come right out. I've had enough. I'm getting out. To the city. The big, big city. I'll make a big noise with all the big boys. So much stuff I'll own. And I will pray to a big God as I kneel in the big church. Big time. I'm on my way. I'm making it. Peter Gabriel's song, Big Time, 1986. A co-worker used to sing the words of this song to me in 2009, after I confided in him that I was in negotiations to make a large sum of money through selling music publishing. His name was James, and he would sing this song to me every time he saw me at work. If you listen to the lyrics, Peter Gabriel sounds like a student of Neville Goddard. I remember hearing the song in the 1980s, as a little kid, but its meaning hits me completely different now. I've found in this 3D life, we're constantly told to play small, be small, think small, to be a God-fearing man or woman, to ultimately be a footstool, to a God outside of ourselves. This is one of the travesties that still has a chokehold around the necks of so many people, especially psychopathically religious people in America. They will fight and kill to remain small in the eye of a fictitious God outside of themselves. They are so foolishly obsessed with being small in the sight of something greater than themselves. They strive to make their tiny brains even smaller in obedience. This is truly mental illness. These people are sick. Watch this to see what I mean. I'm going to be a doctor, and everybody around here better understand that. Sure, she's going to be a doctor, honey, God willing. God hasn't got a thing to do with it. Benita, that just wasn't necessary. No, Mama, neither is God. I get sick of hearing about God all the time. Benita! Mama, I mean it. Now, I'm just tired of hearing about God all the time. What has he got to do with anything? Does he pay tuition? You about to get your fresh little jaw slapped. That's just what she needs, all right. Why? Now, why can't I say what I want to say around here like everybody else? Because it don't sound nice for a young girl to be talking like that. You wasn't brought up that way. Me and your daddy went to the trouble to get you and brother to church every single Sunday. Mama, you don't understand. Now, you see, it's all a matter of ideas, and, and God is just one idea that I don't accept. Now, it's not important. I'm not going to go out and be immoral or, or commit crimes because I don't believe in God. I don't even think about that. It's just that I get so tired of him getting the credit for all the things the human race achieves through its own stubborn effort. Now, there simply is no God. There's only man. And it's he who makes miracles. say after me in my mother's house there is still God in my mother's house there is still God in my mother's house there's still God Just some things we ain't gonna have around here. Not long as I'm still head of this family. Yes, ma'am. That's a clip from the classic 1961 film adaptation of the Lorraine Hansberry play, A Raisin in the Sun. Here, the mother is punishing the daughter for not being small 
and giving all credit, and thanks to a big God outside of herself. This is how most people think, and how they want to guilt you or physically discipline you into not only thinking, but being infinitesimally small. This is pathetic, and you must rail against it in a big way. When you dare to have the unmitigated audacity to be big, huge, large, gigantic, enormous, mammoth, or colossal, you are immediately shouted down and brought to heel. You're told you've gotten too big for your britches and need to be brought down a peg or two. You wouldn't believe the people who used to be around me who were jealous of my supersized godhood. Both family members and former friends would scoff at my realization of being God. My mother's two sisters and a cousin were especially angry at my revelation and movement as a god, and even more mad at my living large. That's jealousy of both my literally and figuratively living bigger than all of them combined. I guess I'd be mad at the vast life and fortune I've amassed if I were them. They are all poor, miserable, and microscopically tiny. They are literally little angry might people and certainly I hope they remain that way forever. Even in this new thought space we are subtly asked to remain small by giving our credit and power away to Source, or the Universe. Let's get this straight once and for all. There is no Source or Universe calling the shots or moving the needle for you. Those are just New Age synonyms for a god outside of self that Neville Goddard flatly calls serving the wrong god. Curse that. You are Source. You are the Universe. You are the Genie. You are God. You are Big. And getting notoriously bigger. Stop stunting your own God growth with this humble bullshit notion of being small. It does not and will not serve you in your Godhood. Your goal should be to not only to get big, but to keep growing non-stop getting bigger and bigger and even bigger. The goal is to never stop growing. Ever. Your godhood should have absolutely no limits and measured capacity. Every single day, your 3D body is above ground on this side of shadow world creation. You are to be a big deal. A mover and shaker in your personal god experience. If people criticize you, move mountains before their very eyes and watch them shrink even further turning even greener in their small-scale compact envy and jealousy. I've been questioned lately why I want to build such a large home. I've decided I don't want anything smaller than 5,000 square feet. I'm admonished that I don't need all the space. They question the number of bedrooms and bathrooms and acreage of land. They question why I would need so much room and space. They want me to be small and only occupy what they think is enough for me. I mentioned I'm having a morning room, which is a small nook built into my bedroom, to have my coffee in the morning without leaving my bedroom. I also told my best friend I was having a urinal installed in my master suite. I was asked why I thought I should have all these extra conveniences as if they were too much for me to have. One lady I know said, What are you planning to build? The next Buckingham Palace or Taj Mahal? I answered with a resounding, yes, both. I want both edifices combined. I need a castle fit for a king. Better yet, a god. I need you guys to outgrow everything like a little baby does. Babies do nothing but constantly grow. They never downsize or consider slowing the pace of their developmental growth. They are constantly growing and learning and becoming more splendidly complex. Don't be afraid of growing taller and wider, becoming more notoriously B.I.G. As usual, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support of the Impudent Demigod channel, as we are nearing 2,000 subscribers. I have so many more ideas and anecdotes to share with you guys. Stay tuned. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, peace.